You gutted him like a fish in that apartment, too. You were relentless. You stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed until he was dead. It's so painful that people, some people in this world seem to think that I would have it in me to do this. I agree with the family. I hope you die in prison as well. All right, we're going to need to take a break. This is Chris McNabb, who's facing charges for murder. You claim you're innocent, so you tell me what sentence the man or woman that you claim did this should receive. If you ever find out who did them, they deserve to be under the jail. Okay. On the crime of malice murder, I sent you to life in confinement without parole. In 2017, Chris, his girlfriend, and two-week-old Kalia were asleep. However, when they woke up in the morning, baby Kalia had disappeared. My two-week-old is not in her sleeper. Her pass is on the floor. She's not in her sleeper. She, she, she's not here. I've looked everywhere. I've looked. And I told my baby's dad to go check on Kalia. And then he's talking about she's not in here. She's not in here. You look through everything, like under the bed, yes, in the ma'am. bathroom. Yes, ma'am. And I have clothes and totes. But I've looked all in on it. She's not here. Soon enough, the police launched a massive search with a passionate Chris. But I want my kid back, man. That's my child, man. I want my kid. Finally, baby Kalia was discovered in a gym bag that belonged to Chris. Following the discovery, Chris fled town, but not for long. You can be number one with that just severe emergency. That guy that his baby was found dead is in the Chevron on 36. In court, Chris and his girlfriend couldn't bear to confront the abuse they had subjected the child to. Can you tell me what's depicted in that photo? I mean, all of these photos are just step by step showing how the body was received and these wrappings um, of how the body was received. Again, this shows that one of the sleeves was over the head and neck. Um, the rest of it was just kind of wrapped around and the baby was wearing this uh, purple onesie that had writing on it as well as a diaper. During the trial, Chris's psychologist revealed some disturbing details. He had he was wearing a turtle suit, um, which is something that prisoners are wearing when they're on side risk. And that he wasn't wearing clothing under that, and he had pulled up the turtle suit and taken out his penis and was masturbating. And did he masturbate um, to completion in your presence? He did. However, Chris remembered things differently. I did have on a, a turtle suit, and it Velcros and it wasn't on properly and it didn't fit properly and the Velcros were not on good because they don't stick because they get, they've been used for so many years by so many different people and I was not at all in front of her, period. The thing fell off when I stood up and that was it. There was no, none of that. And I would have liked to have told her that since she was the one making the accusation. Since I'm pretty sure by my, my the law states that I have a right to confront my witnesses who accuse me of doing wrong. So I felt like I wanted to say it in front of her since she was the one up here slandering me. That was the only thing you wanted to tell the court? I just wanted to know if you had anything you wanted to say to the court. I mean, I got a lot to say. I got, I, I got a lot to say, but I'm not going to be able to say half of it. I don't know because I don't know what you're going to say. I'm innocent. I didn't do it. I just don't understand how you find somebody guilty of doing something to a 15-day-old baby because there was no evidence whatsoever that proved anything about me putting my hands on my kids. I've never done it, and I never would. I don't believe in it. I was beat as a child, and I don't agree with it at all. And I would never do it. I would never do this. That's all I gotta say, I would never do it, I'm innocent. But the judge disagreed. Well, I can make a lot of comments on what you said. I can make a lot of comments on the trial, but I know that was just be arguing with you or talking with you. I'll ask you one simple question. You claim you're innocent, so you tell me what sentence the man or woman that you claim did this should receive. If you ever find out who did them, they deserve to be under the jail. Okay. On the crime of malice murder, I sent you to life in confinement without parole. On concealing the death of another, I sent you to 10 years in confinement consecutive or after. Count one. Do you understand each of your sentences? Yes, sir. Chris's girlfriend, Courtney, also followed Chris's footsteps. had a conversation back We did. I explained to you exactly why you were being charged with the crime. It wasn't that you knew about the murder. It wasn't that you anticipated the murder. 
wasn't that you planned the murder, any of the, those things. It was simply that you created an environment that caused your children to be put second. Now, I'm sorry, but for you to go around chasing McNabb like most criminals, you have this version of what a good mama is that is so far from the norm that, you know, you can go anywhere in this county, talk to anybody who's watching this and say, is it a good mama who doesn't even care about her 14-year-old baby? Put them with a cousin. I've known of instances where mamas won't even let in the first couple of weeks of a child's life people around the child for fear that the child's immune system hadn't been built up and they don't want germs brought into the child. They go to that extent. You went just the exact opposite direction and there's just no excuse for that. And Judge Ott didn't hesitate. On count one, I'm gonna sentence you with 30 years with the first 15 years to be served in confinement in the state penitentiary, the main time on probation. On count three, I'm gonna sentence you to 10 years in confinement in the run at the same time as count one. Now, do you understand your two sentences? Let the record reflect she's nodding her head slightly, yes. The couple are still serving their sentences. Just when you thought you've seen it all, another convict surpasses Chris's wild display. Like in the case of Ortiz Nieves. You had put cigarettes out on this poor little child. There was evidence of that from the pictures. Man, I ain't gonna let you, you, make, you I ain't gonna let you sit here and say that no crazy shit about me, man. He was facing charges of first-degree child abuse and felony murder in Michigan for the murder of four-year-old Giovanni Mejias, the son of his girlfriend. In June 2017, Kent County deputies arrested Ortiz Nieves after Giovanni was found lifeless on the kitchen floor. An autopsy showed internal bleeding from an abdominal tear, indicating trauma caused by an adult, not a child. Alleging you murdered one Giovanni Mejias. It is called felony murder. In court, Ortiz Nieves denied any wrongdoing. However, prosecutors argued differently, backed by confirmation from the medical examiner that the injuries weren't accidental. But the degree and the location and the number of injuries uh, was remarkable. In my opinion, this injury is inflicted with uh, blunt force uh, from uh, an adult individual. The defense had a different take, suggesting that maybe other kids caused the injuries. Surprisingly, the child's mother supported Ortiz Nieves. Him, sock him, push him. He was just mean to him. Did you ever witness Nelson physically discipline the kids? Never. Ortiz finally addressed the court. I'm going to continue to say I will take a lot of detective tests to prove that I never abused any of Sonia's kids or never abused Giovanni and never intentionally meant to hurt Giovanni but to help him. At the sentencing, after Ortiz Nieves was declared guilty, the victim's mother appeared to shift her position. Yesterday was the hardest day, and instead of us celebrating, we took balloons to his grave site. And because what Nelson decided to do to my baby will never bring him back. I'll never see him grow up, fall in love, go to school. Before pronouncing the judgment, Judge Mark Trusak had some strong words for Ortiz. You can claim your innocence, but I sat over this trial and I carefully listened to all the testimony and the jury verdict was clearly correct in this matter. There is no question whatsoever that you committed this murder and that you beat this little boy to death. This is one of the most disgusting trials that I ever had to sit through. But Ortiz wasn't one to go away quietly. Man, I ain't gonna let you, make, I ain't gonna let you sit here and say that no crazy no, shit about me, man. No, man, because he's he, he staying shit you don't even know, man. Sir, anybody says anything back there right now? Nelson! Nelson, please! Now he learns his sentence. You are the lowest form of human life that I've been able to observe or see. You are a monster, and quite frankly, you are evil. What you did was sickening and disgusting. We're done. Take him to prison, please. However, just a few months later, the child's mother was implicated in the crime. Um, my first charge is perjury. 
I lied under oath for a man who I thought loved and cared for me. My second is failure to protect my children and blaming a sibling on a sibling. Your Honor, signing my rights off was the hardest and most difficult decision I had to make. And I have to live with the fact that I failed my children. Your Honor, what you decide to give me is nothing compared to what I have been through. I wanted to apologize to my family. For her role, she received five to ten years in prison. Ortiz Nieves is a prime example of a convict acting crazy in court. However, could Austin Boone's actions be considered even a little crazier? Your pants need to be up when you're in the courtroom. Sir, up! Oh. They up. That's inappropriate. They need to be around your waist, I'm not below your bottom. Put your pants up. You've been just... Not below your bottom. Austin is in a Jefferson District courtroom on charges of speeding and possession of drug paraphernalia. How do you plead to the speeding 22 over and a possession of drug paraphernalia on January 23rd? Despite being briefed by his attorney, Austin is unable to make meaningful headway. However, the judge was considerate. For kind of you don't say guilty or not guilty. Well, if you plead guilty, then I can give you the, the plea agreement that you made. Yeah, that whatever the agreement was. Okay, the agreement was to plead guilty and get a $44 fine plus traffic school plus a $100 fine on the drug paraphernalia. You would pay, pay that today and then go to traffic school so that you would not get the six points on your license. Is that what you understood? No. Okay. And just as things were about to round off, another issue arises. But Austin wasn't ready to comply with the deputy's request, and the matter was escalated to the judge. Your pants need to be up when you're in the courtroom. Okay, that's inappropriate. They need to be around your waist, not below your bottom. Put your pants up. You've been just not below your bottom. I mean, that's my back. I'm gonna see my basketball shorts. Not even my pockets. Do you understand that you're in a court? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you do what the judge says, and that is pull your pants up around your waist. What do you want me to do? Pull your pants up. If you have to tighten your belt, you're going to be an adult when you come to court. Do you understand? Yes, but I'm right now I'm trying to leave court. Unmoved, the judge laid down the rules. You're going to stay a lot longer than you'd like if you don't pull your pants up. Ma'am, they are up. Uh, what do you want from me? They're up. Have a seat. Have a seat with your pants. Have a seat. Because I said so. <laughs> a few minutes later, Austin was called before the judge. Now, he is about to find out that the court is not the streets. By removing your pants, it was extremely poor judgment. Okay, I'm holding you in contempt. I'm going to sentence you to seven days to serve for direct contempt of court. Are you serious? I'm yep. serious. Why? Because you don't know how to act they like a They couldn't be high enough for you, so I took them all. Eventually, he served only two days in jail and was fined for his initial crime. However shocking Austin Boone's reaction to their sentence was, how does it compare to the actions of Jeremy DeWitt? What the f*** does it look like I'm doing, dumb f Get the f*** over before you find out. Stop pretending you're a police officer. Who's in a Florida court for carrying a concealed weapon. Jeremy DeWitt. Did I say that right? Yes, sir. However, this wasn't Jeremy's first meeting with the law. He has been arrested several times for impersonating a police officer. Oh, God. Not him again. It's Jeremy. Eventually, he was arrested, but was later released on bond. However, a few weeks later, officers saw him with a firearm and stopped him. Don't reach for that firearm! Walk away from your bike! Keep your hands up! Keep your hands up! Go down to your knees! Do not reach for that firearm! You're being secure because you're openly carrying a firearm. What? You're openly carrying a firearm! But he won't go down quietly. What are you yanking my helmet I'm trying to identify you because I can't you're see you. You're trying to identify me? Leave my camera alone. What is this? You it is a fire. Is. No, I do not. You know it's a pepper ball. Stop it, man. All right, Jeremy, being arrested for carrying a concealed weapon. Now at the police station, there's a twist to the story. So this online identifies as a Glock, basically a Glock replica.
Can you show me on here anywhere? I mean, I don't know why you'd have a light on a less lethal, but can you show me anywhere on here where it gives anybody the idea that this is not a firearm? That. I don't that make it's, those. That, that it's a less Sorry. lethal? I can't answer that. I don't, I don't make those. But you know they're less lethal. No, no, no. I'm asking. I, I, no, no, I, if no, I no, saw no. this, I wouldn't know that. This, that's where you're from. <clears throat> but you can save that for somebody else. Okay. Although the charges were dropped, Jeremy still needs a judge to confirm. All right, sir, Your Honor. I was on bond. They revoked my bond with a new charge, but that charge was dropped. He has That's what they do. approximately they 10 or 11 other cases that he's currently incarcerated. Oh, you got a bunch of di different cases that are yes. keeping you. Right. Jeremy's bond was later instated, and he was set free. His case is still ongoing. Jeremy isn't alone in his courtroom actions. Let's not forget the notorious incident involving 18-year-old Peyton Gendron. We never go in no neighborhood to take people out. He was in court for multiple counts of murder. In May 2022, Peyton committed a devastating mass shooting at a Topps friendly market supermarket in a black neighborhood in New York, killing 10 black people and injuring three others. After he was arrested, investigators discovered that he had written a manifesto where he identified himself as an ethno-nationalist and a supporter of white supremacy. It was straight up racially motivated hate crime from somebody outside of our community. While the crimes committed by Peyton were abhorrent, his courtroom conduct will leave you speechless. He showed no remorse as victims spoke to him. For one particular victim, it was too much to bear. On May 19, 2022, Gendron pleaded not guilty. But in November 2022, he altered his plea, admitting guilt to all state charges. There is no place for you or your ignorant, hateful, and evil ideologies. You will never see the light of day as a free man ever again. It is the judgment of this court for your conviction under the first count of the indictment, a domestic act of terrorism motivated by hate in the first degree an A1 felony, that you be sentenced to life imprisonment without parole. Eventually, Gendron was sentenced to 11 consecutive life terms with no chance of parole in February 2023. While Gendron's behavior was shocking, it's nothing compared to the utter mayhem caused by Daniel Nicholson, who's in court on weapons charges in Adelaide, Australia. The 35-year-old father of four is out on bail, but now the judge has to decide if he should remain on bail until his trial. If you thought Daniel's crimes were reprehensible, brace yourself for his shocking conduct during the proceedings. When Magistrate Sue O'Connor announces her decision, Nicholson has confusion written all over his face. Before his attorney can respond, Magistrate O'Connor indicates that the ruling does not favor him. Now, Daniel is about to be detained. Take a seat. Take a seat. Miss, please, miss. Please, miss. I'll show you what please, miss no, no, no. But Daniel doesn't want to be detained today. Officers rush to bring order to the court, and the situation escalates. <laughs> Despite Daniel's attempts, the officers were able to subdue him. For his escape attempt, he was charged with attempting to escape custody and causing harm to emergency workers. In the end, Daniel received a 21-month prison sentence with a chance for parole after a year. He also pleaded guilty to the initial weapons charge and was fined $320. While it was clear that Daniel wasn't happy to hear he was going to spend time behind bars, his reaction was similar to the case of Jesse Rose, who's in court for assault in Wollongong, Western Australia. Jesse, an aspiring rugby player 
and his friend had gone to a club. At the club, a drunk Jesse was told to leave by security, but rather than leaving, Jesse decided to test his fighting skills. As if Jesse's crime was not outrageous enough, his reaction to his sentence was even more dramatic. At the sentencing hearing, Rose's lawyer argued against sending him to jail, but the judge, Andrew Hassler, had other ideas. However, Jesse didn't take kindly to Judge Andrew's decision. Luckily, officers intervened. Due to his courtroom outburst, Rose faced extra charges leading to an additional eight months added to his initial 14-month sentence. This wasn't the only time a convict freaked out during their sentencing. Enter 39-year-old David St. John. Mr. St. John, you are charged with the felony offenses a felon in possession of a weapon, an aggravated assault of a child older than 14 but younger than 17. While the judge was reading, David got a bright idea. After you sign the Just order... Just keep going, you're Just keep going, you're After you sign Just the order... Just keep going, you're arrested! Just keep going, you're arrested! Before he could do more harm, an officer reacted. Okay, hit the panic button. Call someone, call someone, call someone. So was I. Sit down, man. Sit down. I learned your lesson. Hey! I'm fine. What was that? No, you didn't learn your lesson. You don't end up like me. You suck. You got a little attitude. Get up. While still in court, he had some words for the victim. Are you okay, Mr. Randall? Oh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Despite his theatrics, no further charges were brought against him, and he was remanded in prison. However, when emotions run high in court, the actions of David St. John and Trey Relford leave us questioning sanity itself. Trey Alexander Relford. If Salahuddin were to be here, if he are alive, he will forgive you. I want you to know that. I forgive you on behalf of Salahuddin and his mother. Trey is facing charges for the murder of pizza delivery driver Salahuddin Jitmud in Kentucky. Salahuddin was delivering pizza when Trey and his group tricked him into an apartment complex, stole from him, and ended his life. Now in court, Trey pled guilty to the crimes and speaks directly to the family of the victim. I'm sorry about what happened that day. I have a child. I can imagine the hurt, the pain from the vision of earth. Just tell us what I can do. In an emotional moment, Abdul Munim Sombat Jitmud, the father of Salahuddin, shocked the courtroom. Three. Alexander Relford, I feel so, so sad for you that uh, you have to be in this situation. I wish I could help you as I help my son to be a good citizen. If Salahuddin were to be here, if he alive, he will forgive you. That's the way he was. That's the way he is. I'm not angry at you for being part of hurting my son. I'm angry at the devil. I blame the devil who misguiding you and misleading you to do such a horrible crime. No, I don't blame you. I'm not angry at you at all. I want you to know that. I forgive you on behalf of Salahuddin and his mother. There was no dry eye in the court. Trey's mother also has a weight to lift off her chest. And I know I am deeply sorry for your loss. And I thank you so much for comforting me and my family. 
because I was shocked to hear your forgiveness. It's now time for Trey to learn his sentence. I am going to accept the Commonwealth's recommendation. Murder, 25 years. And I truly wish for you the very best. Thank you. Trey is still serving his sentence in prison. While Trey's behavior raised eyebrows, however, it's nothing compared to the dramatic actions of 44-year-old Diana Lovejoy, who's facing charges for attempted murder and conspiracy to commit murder in California. In 2016, Diana and her lover and gun instructor, Welton McDavid Jr., planned to murder Diana's ex-husband, Greg Mulvihill. The couple's relationship had gone sour following a bitter divorce and child custody battle. Fortunately, the assassination attempt failed. Do you know who shot him? There's a guy lying down like a sniper. A sniper? Did you see him at all? Briefly, we saw the, the gun, and he shot at us like six or seven times. He was really, bleeding pretty black. My friend's getting lightheaded. That's okay. I got paramedics in route, okay? I have officers in route. I got help out to you, okay? Subsequent police investigations led to Diana and her lover, Welton, and they were arrested. In court, Diana had a different story. But her story didn't move the jury. We, the jury, in the above entitled cause, find the defendant, Diana Jean Lovejoy, guilty of the crime of a attempted murder of Greg Mulvihill. While the magnitude of Diana's crimes were daunting, her courtroom behavior will leave you in disbelief. Immediately, when Diana heard her sentence, everything changed. We, the jury, in the above entitled cause, find the defendant, Diana Jean Lovejoy, guilty of the crime. Yeah. She was later rushed to the hospital. Doctors confirmed that she only fainted. Her accomplice, Welton, was sentenced to 50 years for pulling the trigger. Diana Lovejoy wasn't the first person to be dramatic in court, like in the case of Aubrey Trail, who's facing charges for murder in Nebraska. In 2017, Sidney Wolf and Aubrey's girlfriend, Bailey Boswell, connected on Tinder. In November, Sidney disappeared after a date with Bailey. A few weeks later, Sidney's dismembered remains were discovered in trash bags in a rural area. Following detailed investigations, Aubrey and his girlfriend were arrested. In court, as witnesses were being called, Aubrey decided he had seen enough. Please be seated. Bailey is innocent, and I curse you all. Fortunately, Aubrey recovered and was back in court with evidence of his action. Aubrey's freedom was restricted, but he was more cooperative. You know, she was in desperate straits, I guess is the right way to put it, and uh, I'm sorry to say I played on that. Sidney Loof died that night. Later down the road, I come up with a story to try to protect me and her, you know, mostly her, but because it was only me, Bailey, and Sydney there the night Sydney died. What did you use to dismember the body? I used a saw that it's similar to a um, hacksaw blade, but it's uh, I call it a curve saw. It was a really bad, bad decision, but it's one I own. I mean, I I did it. I have to live with it. He even addressed the victim's family. I am writing this down so that I don't leave anything out, as this will be the only time I get to address Sydney Lou's family. I realize that nothing I can say here today will change in the least what I did to Sydney three and a half years ago. Sydney Loof did not die as a result of erotic asphyxiation. I murdered her. Until now, I have never told the truth about how and why Sydney died. Almost everything I said was a lie unless it benefited me. I took her in the bedroom and told her to lay down and relax and warned her what would happen if she didn't. The truth is I killed Sydney because of her reaction to what I had told her and shown her. I've always told the truth that the reason I dismembered her body was that I could find no other way to get her out of the apartment without being seen carrying her. Now it's time to learn his fate. Imposed by the panel on count one, murder in the first degree, a class one felony, the defendant is sentenced to death. Eventually, Aubrey received a death sentence while his girlfriend was sentenced to life imprisonment. 
While some may attribute Aubrey's reaction to mental illness, it pales in comparison to the unfathomable behavior of Camille Gamet, who was in court for the murder of her boyfriend, Marcel Hill. You were relentless. You stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed until he was dead. In May 2012, police received a distress call from Gamet's apartment. Upon arrival, they found her covered in blood, with Marcel Hill deceased. She was arrested, but in court, she had a different view. Basically, at trial, the way I was portrayed, everything, mostly everything was lies. There was a little bit of truth, but mostly I was convicted off of lies. However, prosecutors did not agree. We have no choice but to send her where she will also die. I can't believe she stands before you doing this this morning. Now it's time for victims to tell Camille how her actions affected them. I also remember the cries of help that he screamed as you plunged that knife in and out of his body. Prepare for a twist that will make your jaw drop. Camille's utter lack of remorse in the courtroom. She didn't want to go down quietly. The judge had to step in. You're going to shut your mouth or I'm going to have some duct tape put on it. Well, he attacked would you, we'll wait here for a moment so we can get her quiet. He had strong words for Camille. You stabbed him no less than 12 times. You were relentless. You stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed, you stabbed until he was dead. You didn't think he was an intruder. You know, maybe one stab wound. Okay, maybe maybe that's seven defense. But you, you, you put in 11 more to make sure he was good and dead. Then it was time for Camille to learn her fate. I agree with the family. I hope you die in prison as well. You know, if this was a death penalty state, you'd be getting the chair. Camille is still serving her sentence in prison. However, it's not the first time a convict has lost control in court, just like what happened in the notorious case of Arthur Williamson, who's in court for the murder of news anchor Jim Matthews. I am sorry. I'm sorry. Well, sir, you're a pedophile. You're a murderer, and you're really the embodiment of evil. And it's good that you never see the light of day outside of the prison. Arthur had a notorious criminal background. Now in court, he feels differently. I am sorry. I'm sorry. Before he is sentenced, the judge has a few words for him. Victim Rosie said, what happened? Did you kill my dad? Just talking to you. And then you try to f her. Now you said in your statement to, it's also the PSI, you didn't want to go out as a pedophile. Well, sir, you're a pedophile, you're a murderer, and you're really the embodiment of evil. And it's good that you'll never see the light of day outside of the prison. And now he learns his sentence. Count one. It's the sentence of the court you uh, sentenced to the Michigan Department of Corrections for a period of life without parole. Counts three and four, you're to be sentenced to the Department of Corrections for a period of 420 months to 648 months, 250 days credit. All the terms and conditions are the same. Counts five, six, and seven, you're, sent, you're to be sentenced to the Michigan Department for uh, Corrections for a period of 420 months to 648 months. Arthur is still serving his life sentence in prison. However shocking Arthur's reaction to their sentence was, how does it compare to the crazy actions of Damon Kemp, who's facing charges for murder in Florida? God! 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 On December 7, 2018, Damon sneaked into an apartment he shared with his friends, stole some bills, and then fatally shot them. He murdered Trey Ingram and Trey's friend, Jordan Payton. Trey's family say he was an up-and-coming boxer working to get back in school at BCU. He was helping the suspect get back on his feet by letting him stay with him rent-free, being the giver that Trey's mom said he's always been. Faced with their loss in court, the mother of one of the victims couldn't bear it. <laughs> Making his first appearance in court, Damon couldn't keep calm.
Eventually, he was sentenced to 26 years to life in prison. While this reaction could certainly be dismissed as an effect of drugs or mental illness, the same can't be said for the case of Judge Tracy Hunter, who's facing charges for multiple crimes, including forgery, theft, and unlawful interest in a public contract in Ohio. Now in court, Judge Tracy did not allow the situation to take her voice. I take great exception to your disparagement of my name in this courtroom today. I'm not sure what you meant by the term that this defendant is gaming the system, but be clear here, the only gaming that is going on in Hamilton County is by the Hamilton County Juvenile Court. Judge John Williams. Her attorney also revealed how much she had suffered following several appeals. She's lost peace of mind. As I said, not knowing when that day was going to come that she'd have to go to jail. That's a lot for one person to have on her shoulders. It's now time for the judge in charge to pronounce his sentence. But first, a warning. Judge Dinkelacher, exonerate Judge Hunter now. Drop all charges, restore her good name. I am a taxpayer and a registered voter. I'm a registered voter. Please let Tracy Hunter. She is innocent of all charges. As a concerned citizen and a registered voter, I urge you to exonerate Judge Tracy Hunter now. I'm a registered voter in Ohio, and I may, I'm asking that you release Tracy Hunter of all charges. But the attempt was to intimidate me in any way that has flat out failed. Okay? I will never, ever, ever bow to that type of pressure, veiled threats, vicious comments, lies about me or anything else. And now the sentence. Number one, you pay the cost of these proceedings. Number two, you are to do not violate any laws. Number three, you are to do six months in the Hamilton County Justice Center. Credit one day. Uh, Mr. and Ms. Deputy can take her away. After he announced the sentence, chaos erupted in court. Supporters of Judge Tracy couldn't accept the sentence. Even Judge Tracy herself put up a show. Eventually, she was taken into custody. Outside, her supporters continued their protest. Eventually, she served her sentence, spending almost three months in jail. 